Hello, everyone. And just as I promised, I keep my promises. I do my best, at least. We have Stan the Jet Fan here to give us the Jet Fan reaction to the Hassan Reddick news of him requesting a trade. That's coming up next on No Butts About It. All righty, Stan. So, as always, it's great to have you on the show. Great to talk to you, especially about New York Jets football. Um, we got to have you on sometime, though, when it's a positive news story about the New York Jets. It seems like it's always something negative. And uh, we, this we time, dabble in good stuff. We dabble, but lately it's it's been rough. And now we've got a guy who hasn't played a single snap for the New York Jets. He hasn't even practiced with the Jets, and he is already requesting a trade. So let's just get your initial thoughts. Take me back to yesterday when you saw your first notification, whether it was a text from me or ESPN notification, whatever it was. What were your first thoughts when you heard uh, Hassan Reddick wanted a trade? Um, to some extent, I saw it coming, but really just felt like, uh, you know, we're never going to see this guy. He's one of the guys I was most excited to see this season. Um, definitely out of the the only uh, handful of guys we brought onto the defensive side of the ball, he was probably the one I was most excited to see, right? So that, that's one thing as a fan, you're not, you, we're not going to be able to see him as a Jet. Um, I hope there's still some way to work this out, but uh, another initial reaction I had was just thinking about how bad – uh, the Bryce Huff situation played out because, you know, uh, you look at the Eagles now with Bryce Huff and, you know, they're saying they don't think he's going to be, uh, you know, a every down uh, type of defensive ed uh, edge, uh, the type of guy they were looking for and the type of guy that Reddick is. Uh, but at the end of the day, at least you had Huff, you know, Huff was going to play. He wasn't going to give you too many problems. At least you had him. Now you have Reddick who is giving you problems and has been giving you problems. You've been finding, I think, upwards of a million of million uh, dollars now um, and you don't have a guy who's going to have that position uh, taken care of on day one so that's one big issue it's probably the biggest uh, open position on our roster or at least on the defensive side of our roster so it's, it's a big issue there um, it really makes me think that Douglas uh, just really needs to look back at the height uh, sorry the Bryce Huff situation and ask what can we do to prevent this from happening again so you brought up Joe Douglas, so let's just skip right to that. And let's look at his response to the – like, and this was – like, it was literally Hassan Reddick requests trade, and then within a half hour, this statement comes out, and it says, we have informed Hassan that we will not trade him, that he is expected to be here with his teammates, and that we will continue – that he will continue to be fined per the CBA – if he does not report since the trade discussions back in March, we have been clear, direct and consistent with our position. Our focus will remain on the guys we have here as we prepare for the regular season. So that's a pretty uh, hard hammered way um, quickly put out. They, they didn't let the media control that narrative at all. They said the jets said, this is what we're going to do. What do you think about that immediate, um, very strong response to the news. Oh, I think I think doing it like that was the best thing they could have done, and the only thing they could have done. Um, I think they know they messed up the situation. I think they know they should have stuck with uh, Huff or someone else, right? Not not gone to Reddick uh, when Reddick wanted a a new deal that the Jets were never going to be able to offer, and more importantly, that a lot of teams in the NFL were not willing to offer. Right? The Jets were so desperate for an edge who can play at a huff or above huff level um, that they threw in way too much, way too fast in this trade. Right. So we're the easiest, easiest way out of this situation would be to pay Hassan Reddick. I, th at least the way I'm looking at it and it's rumored. He wants $25 million a year, which is, we talk, I talked about this in the video I put out yesterday when the news came out. That's like Brian Burns, Joshua Hines Allen money. Um, 
as a fan, is that type the type of money that you would want to see dedicated to the pass rushing position for someone of Hassan Reddick's caliber? Uh, I mean, do I want to see that? Yes, but do I think it's the best decision? Um, from from the financial side, no, because you have so many big players coming up. And I would be fine giving Reddick a really big uh, one year for the Jets. Like you give you know, give him all the bonuses, give him all the incentives, um, give him uh, guarantee as much of his money as you can. Um, but more of my issue is that we have so many young players who are going to need to be resigned these next couple of years. Um, like Sauce and Garrett are 100 percent going to get resigned. Uh, Brees Hall, I think he should be 100 percent getting resigned. I think realistically, there's a chance to try to you know franchise tag him twice. Um, and there's so many other players, Michael Carter II, uh, Jermaine Johnson, who their contracts are going to come back, and you need to keep them to keep the young core of this team together. So, uh, and, and Huff could have been a uh, part of that young core, but the Jets waited way too long to try to extend him, and uh, obviously he went somewhere else. Right, and it sounds like Joe Douglas did initially try to give Reddick this um, – at least the rest of the money on his contract to be fully guaranteed, or at least most of it guaranteed that 14.25 million, I think it is. And we saw obviously that he wasn't interested in that as a player. Um, I guess my question then is where do you go? go from here where would you like to see douglas go from here um because as you said the caps situation for the jets and the, all their young players they have doesn't necessarily allow you to pay him what you you'd be okay with him getting paid but long term that probably wouldn't be the best idea and i i don't know if you could even trade him because now Teams have seen that Reddick is willing to sit da- sit out. He If he doesn't like the way things are going, he'll just go do whatever he wants and he'll pay the fines. I mean, um, it sounds like the Eagles even may have known that ahead of time because they're, these are rumors, but in the organization they said that he was sack chasing, trying to get a bigger contract. He was abandoning the initial defensive scheme and just going – to chase sacks whenever, even if he was supposed to drop into coverage. So it this may be a longer uh, personality issue. Do you think that the Jets are even going to be able to get a trade done now? Um, I think it's I think it's a possibility because um, there are enough teams out there that have the cap space that need people. Um, just off the top of my head, even though I don't think this is likely, the Patriots come to mind as a team like that where they have a lot of money left to uh, to spend. Um, and they, they could definitely use someone for their edge room. Um, I think the bigger issue is that, uh, as you said, now teams have seen him kind of wind around. So where, where does his value lie, right? Does he still have can, – can he get a third pick, a third round pick, um, which I think it's still possible. I think there, there are teams that would give a third round pick for him. So if the Jets get that or something better than that, maybe a third and a sixth or whatever, um, I could see that working out well. Uh, I don't think – we're going to really make anything above just breaking even on this. Um, and, and another thing is we also got rid of JFM, right? We got rid of JFM um, in order to make room for Reddick's contracts and other contracts on the team. Uh, we got re- we let Bryce Huff walk away in order to do the same thing. So we lost two edges who are in our rotation, who are working well for us, for this guy who may not play a snap ever for the Jets uh, and who we already lost a third-round pick for. Yeah, and not possibly even a second round pick. Like it was a conditional third round pick. You guys were willing to give up a second round pick for him as well. Obviously, if he doesn't play those snaps, Eagles don't get that second round pick. But um, there is, and I still haven't figured out how this works out. If he doesn't fulfill his end of the trade, do the Eagles get screwed over? I don't think the Eagles get screwed over. I think the only team that would get screwed over here is the jets because as you mentioned you let all those guys go to fill or to open up space for reddick you've given away a third round pick you may not get a player you have to hope someone comes in to trade for him do you do you feel like the jets have any leverage at all in the trade 
Uh, in a trade, definitely not. I mean, there's w- way too late for that to even be in the question, right? Um, I think Reddick has all the uh, cards here. And what I what I hope for is that Reddick is just kind of bluffing with this. He doesn't really want to go somewhere else. He just wants to get that uh, deal signed ASAP. And I think once the Jets look around for a trade student and realize the value may not be there, I think they will have to give uh, Reddick the contract he wants. Okay, so final, final. Really, this is just going to be your opportunity to, as a Jets fan, say what you want to say. Whether it's a message to Hassan Reddick you want to put out on the internet, a message to J- Joe Douglas that you want to put out on the internet, whatever it is, just let us know. Do you? What do you, as a Jets fan, want to see done with this situation? I mean, there's not really anything that can be done, to be honest. It's just a sucky situation. I think the big thing for me right now thinking about this is that there should be more of a target on Joe Douglas's back. I think he has to really uh, pull things together. And I was someone who was very lax on him throughout last season, throughout seeing um, all the mistakes he has made. He has made a lot lot of mistakes specifically on offense. Uh, But something of this level, right? You lost JFM, you lost Bryce Huff, you lost a draft pick, and you're getting this guy who may not even play for you. Something of this level, it just can't happen. And I think – you know, even if anyone out there is willing to give this one to Joe Douglas, saying, you know what, you could take this one, we'll move on, uh, just don't do it again, there, you have to have a super short stick left, right? Like there, there's for, – for me, I'm kind of I'm kind of at the point where, you know, I do, I do appreciate all the young players he's brought in, and I really like the guys he's brought in from other teams on defense, but I'm not too sure if the value of that is really better than the mistake of – uh, Reddick, plus the mistake of bringing in all the retired Packers players last year. Um, like so many, so many of those mistakes, I think we're reaching a point where Joe Douglas's tenure with the Jets is looking like a negative outside of just the win loss column. Okay. So there you have it, folks. Uh, this, this, this could be Joe Douglas's career right here. Uh, we appreciate Stan stopping by as always, giving us his thoughts. Um, if, you have thoughts make sure to let us know down in the comments before you leave we'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button as well it really helps us out on the channel um until next time i'm josh butts for stan the jet fan go do something nice for someone